What up, it's me A to Z and we're back with more Pokemon Fire Red. Last time, we explored the rest of the islands, got everything done, we're finished with the islands guys, and we caught Heracross and Larvitar, and as you'll see, I've leveled up Larvitar quite a bit. Heracross isn't with us, but there's a reason why. Anyway, this time we've got a little bit of unfinished business involving some very special Pokemon. So to start off, you're wondering, you're probably wondering what I'm doing here on uh, Route 11. So what I want to do is I want to get a Max Repel up. I want to get a Max Repel up, and I want to have a Pokemon that's below level 50, which is why I got Pidgey out with me. So with a Pokemon below level 50 and with a Max Repel up, I'm just going to walk around in this grass and uh, see what I run into. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you can run into the legendary beasts in this game. And in my case, I have run into Suicune. Now, the legendary beasts that you run into, and I said legendary beasts, not legendary dogs, not legendary cats. Beasts. Get it right, guys. But yeah, the beast you run into is completely determined on what starter you pick. So, since I picked Charmander, I'm running into Suicune. Suicune is a fantastic wall. Its bulk is fantastic all across the board with its really high HP and fantastic defensive stats. It has access to some great stalling and support moves, and it can actually deal damage with its pretty diverse attacking move pool. So as more tools get introduced along the generation, Suicune gets better at what it does, and I would say Suicune is a contender for one of the best of the three legendary beasts. To this day, a lot of people use Suicune on their teams. Now, if you picked Squirtle, you will run into Raikou. Raikou is your uh, standard electric type. It's fast and it's strong. It's the fastest of the three legendary beasts by far, and electric is a great attacking type. However, in this game and compared to the other two beasts, its move pool is definitely a bit limited. You're going to be limited to mostly electric type attacks and maybe a few other special attacks like Crunch. And re really, if you think about it, Raikou is kind of the forgotten child compared to the other two. But Suicune got its own game, Entei got its own movie. What did Raikou get? An hour-long TV special. That's it. Like, I'm sorry, Raikou. <laughs> anyway, despite all that, Raikou really is a contender for being one of the best of the three beasts. And last but not least, if you pick Bulbasaur, you will run into Entei. Entei is a force. Entei has very high physical attack with some respectable bulk as its other high stat is HP. However, its stat spread is really weird for a fire type since physical fire types attacks. <laughs> there's no such thing as physical fire types because there's no physical special split, but the rest of its stats are not bad by any means. Entei might not be the best of the three, but really, it can still work wonders if it's used properly. Anyway, so uh, let me explain the mechanics of this. Suicune is actually a roaming legendary, meaning that you only get one turn to attack it, and once you do, you'll see here I'll do wing attack. It's really not going to do much because it's massive bulk. It runs away. So it's a roaming legendary. So you really only have one shot to like attack it and then, you know, catch it and then it'll run away. However, the damage you do actually stays with it the next time you encounter it. So, uh, really it's all, it's, you know, it's not that bad, but you are going to have like just one chance to throw a Pokeball at it. After it runs away, um, you're pretty much going to be going from root to root trying to find out where it is. Your Pokedex can help you. It'll tell you exactly which route it's on. And then when you know where it is, you throw up a Repel, make sure you have a weaker Pokemon, and then it'll show up. Because if you don't put a Repel up, you'll actually run into the weaker Pokemon in the route. But yup, the Legendary Beasts, they're fantastic Pokemon. They'll show up only if you get the National Dex. And yup. Anyway, <laughs> there's one thing I want to do really quickly. Uh, give me a second, I'll be right back. Alright, I got, I got done what I wanted to get done, so uh, on my way to where we need to go, I decided to stop by Saffron really quickly. Because if you remember, there was a Pokemon Trainer Fan Club, so let's hop in here and see... Ooh! Huh? You? Are you maybe... You are! You are, Adam! We were just talking about you! We were talking about how an incredibly good trainer appeared, and that someone is you! You're so cool! So we decided that we'll become your fan club! We all hope you'll keep battling and show us how cool you are! Oh my god, I have a fan club! Oh my god, I have fans! Guys, I have fangirls. Well, fan girl, but <laughs> it's something. I have fans. Oh, it's Adam. Too cool. Oh, yeah. Can you autograph something? How about my shorts? <laughs> oh, you silly youngsters. Anyway, uh, Lieutenant Surge is cool, huh? I love the way he talks. I really relish a chance to meet him in person. So these guys aren't sold on us, but screw those guys. Actually, no, don't screw those guys. Whatever. They're, they're all great people, regardless. But who knows? Maybe I can convince them <laughs> about my greatness. These guys, they know. They know that I'm something. It's great to finally have fans. <laughs> Who knows, maybe one day I'll actually get, you know, an actual fan base in YouTube. Which, okay, to be fair, I do have a good 200-something subscribers, and, you know, you guys are all awesome. But you never know, in time, maybe I'll grow. 
here's hoping I got goals for 2017 guys Let, let's see how let's see how I do I got goals I got plans 2017 is gonna be I feel like it's gonna be a great year for me in terms of YouTube anyway I'm gonna hop into the Pokemon Center rearrange some stuff so I'll be right back and as soon as I enter I exit so I've got my team all set and let me just check them out really quick so like I've said I've leveled up Heracross and Larvitar sufficiently they're now in their mid 50s they still have a bit to do because as you'll see everybody else is in their 70s and there's a good reason why but um, there's one thing I want to do really quickly I've got two rare candies left and as you notice Larvitar's at level 53 so I think it's fitting that I just give Larvitar these last two rare candies and have him evolve so he'll level 54 and he will evolve into Pupitar <laughs> Ah oh, man, I'm I'm really excited for this. Larvitar is like I said, not even Larvitar himself, but we'll, we'll, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, guys. Just exciting things are gonna happen. And there's Pupitar. It's a shame he's not gonna get to battle as Pupitar really, because like I'm just gonna feed him this next rare candy. <laughs> he's gonna hit level 55, and he's gonna evolve again. Oh man, Larvitar, like I said, he might start off generic, you know, just as a rock ground type, and even as Pupitar, he'll still be rock and ground, and he'll have a better ability, but it's when he reaches level 55. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on the almighty Tyranitar. We finally have him. God, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's amazing, we finally have my second all-time favorite Pokemon. That's right, Tyranitar is my second all-time favorite Pokemon. Not Greninja. You would think it would be Snoop Frog, but it's not actually. <laughs> okay, to be fair, Greninja is actually like a contender to be tied for second with Tyranitar. I don't know. Greninja, you know, you know how Snoop Frog and I, you know how we bonded. Snoop Frog is like my son. <laughs> okay, I am the father. I am not the son, like some other people have said. Danny. <laughs> anyway. Enough of that mess. So, our main attraction for the day is this cavern right here. Sorry about that, I had to cut away. Anyway, our main attraction for the day, for this episode, is this cavern right here. Something awaits us in here, and I recommend that you have your best Pokemon with you. So, in order to get this cavern unlocked, you have to not only beat the Pokemon League, but you have to finish the whole island side quest. You have to get both the Ruby and Sapphire, give them the Celio, and link up with Hoenn. In the original games, all you had to do was beat the Pokemon League, but in Fire Red, Leaf Green, you have to do all that. But since we have all that done, only thing left to do is head in. Welcome to Cerulean Cave, or as my friends and I used to call it when we were kids, the Unknown Dungeon. The Unknown Dungeon is home to some very, very powerful Pokemon. Do not take this place lightly, guys. It even has Wob effects, so come with repels. You do not want to be fighting Wob effects. I'll say that much. Anyway, I'm just gonna blaze through this place because I really have no business with any of the weaker Pokemon here. Well, I say weaker relatively because just oh man, what awaits us in this cave is nothing to take lightly. We are in it for the long haul, guys. There is something that awaits us at the bottom of this cave. Oh man, I'm surprised I'm remembering it as well as, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm remembering it better than I thought I would because the layout's actually, the thing is with the layout, I was thinking I was remembering this from the layout from the original red and blue, but it's, uh, it's different. This is actually the layout from the original Japanese, uh, red and green that they copied. Uh, the layout in red and blue was different and the layout in yellow was different, so they actually changed the layout of this dungeon a lot, which is a little bit weird. I don't know why they did that, but I, you know, I'm not complaining. Ultra Ball, we're definitely gonna need one of those. So, as we slowly make our way down here, one last surf. What do we have here? A mysterious creature awaits us. A mysterious creature. Probably waiting for us to challenge it. Guys, we've come so far. We've caught so many Pokemon, and this thing is no different. It's a Pokemon regardless, so I can only think of one thing to do. An experiment designed to create a clone of the mythical Pokemon Mew. A man-made creature that rejected those who created it and went mad. 
a name that strikes fear in countless trainers and Pokemon. Mewtwo. <laughs> Mewtwo is the most powerful Pokemon in the game. In the original games, Mewtwo was the undisputed king. It's extremely fast, respectable bulk, and it has ungodly attack stats. Add the fact that it was a psychic type in the first generation, and you have an utterly broken Pokemon that almost nothing could touch. As time went on, more and more answers to psychic types in Mewtwo were introduced, like dark types and steel types, but that did not phase Mewtwo at all as he was given more and more options to counter those answers. Eventually, as time went on, Mewtwo was knocked from his throne as the strongest Pokemon in existence by Arceus, but upon the introduction of Mega Evolution in Pokemon X and Y, Mewtwo reclaimed his throne with not one, but two Mega Evolutions. Time has been incredibly kind to Mewtwo, and to this day, it's still a top tier threat in Pokemon, and even now, it's a top tier threat in Super Smash Bros. If you can catch it, you will have an unstoppable force on your side. Only a god will be able to stand in your way, and even then, it will struggle against this man-made terror. There he is in his, all of his glory. Mewtwo, the most powerful Pokemon in this game. Here he is, bow before him, the king, the undisputed king of the original 151. Oh man, now we're gonna have a hell of a time trying to catch this thing. I don't even know if we'll be able to do it, like, it's just, I don't know. I don't know if I came prepared. I'm a little bit worried. Wait, I have a Master Ball. Maybe that'll work? Huh, well that was easy. <laughs> I don't know what I was worried about. There we go, we got Mewtwo! <laughs> yup, this is what I was saving my Master Ball for. Not for Suicune, for this guy. <laughs> we got Mewtwo in 30 seconds. Anticlimactic? Maybe. Okay, I feel like I cheated you guys out of some Atom Rage, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset the game and I'm actually gonna fight Mewtwo legitimately. So, um, be right back. Okay, time for Mewtwo round two. Electric Boogaloo. Let's actually fight him this time. Now Mewtwo, you saw his base stats when I put up the bio. He doesn't goof around. I am willing to bet Charizard does not one-hit kill him. First of all, he's level 70. Easily the strongest Pokemon we've run into. Oh, that did a lot more, but I thought, oh, that's gonna hurt. Ooh, ooh, that's gonna hurt. How much is that gonna do? That did more than half. Okay, I'm worried now. Hmm. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking. Jolteon, get out here. Uh, Charizard, you've done your job. Jolteon, get out here and just, um... Alright, he's using Swift. Good. So, I'm actually really glad I still have Thunder Wave on Jolteon. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And now he's paralyzed. Again, just like the legendary birds, you wanna paralyze Mewtwo. <laughs> All right, who should we get out next? Ah, uh, how about Lapras? I'm thinking Lapras won't kill it. However, you do have to worry about the fact that it does have, um, it does have recover. So if you do damage to it, it will heal it back. I'm just gonna warn you. I'm thinking Thunderbolt won't kill it. It'll do, there we go, Pr ah, you Dick! Damn it, you two! Ah, crap. Okay. Oh, oh, I don't want to use Surf because I'm afraid that might kill it. Um, just keep Thunderbolting. Just keep Thunderbolting. That's the problem is that it has recover, so it's gonna troll you by healing itself. There we go. That was a smart thing to do. Okay. Now. All right. Sorry about that. I got interrupted. You know, it tends to happen when you record when people are here, but it's all right. Anyway. So as I was saying, I got 51 Ultra Balls, I got 30 Timer Balls. Now Timer Balls, I actually got those from Two Island Shop, and remember that one guy who was just selling Great Balls? Well, his wares expand as you go throughout the game and the post game and everything, so you can buy Timer Balls. And these are actually very useful for Mewtwo, because the longer the battle goes on, the better chance that these Timer Balls work. So I'm just gonna start off by chugging an Ultra Ball, and see how that does. I'm not expecting anything, in fact, I'm expecting this to be Zapdos all over again. 
Yep, this is, okay. Now this is really gonna be Zapdos. <laughs> On the plus side, it's paralyzed, so, you know, can't really, can't really do much. I mean, at this point, all I'm gonna be doing is chugging Ultra Balls at it and sitting here. Mewtwo, oh my god. I remember when I first ran into Mewtwo as a kid, you know, going through the Unknown Dungeon. Man, I was intimidated as all hell when I saw that thing. And when I finally caught it, just like every other kid, you can't tell me, you can't tell me as a kid that you did not slap this thing on your team, beat all your friends with it, beat the Elite Four with it over and over and over, got that thing to level 100, and you were just, you can't lie to me. All right? Mewtwo was that one Pokemon that's just, if you had it, you were cool. If you beat the game and you caught Mewtwo, you were cool. And you were in that club of all the I caught Mewtwo kids. Alright, and it's definitely no joke. My god, it's been breaking out of every ball like nobody's business. I don't know why it's using Safeguard like a fool. It could easily nuke me with Psychic. It could easily recover its health. It could easily break out of these balls. Oh, we're gonna be here for a while. We might get to the point where I start cutting away if I run out of things to talk about, but yeah. What else can I mention about Mewtwo? Oh! Oh, there's something I want to talk about with Mewtwo. Mewtwo and Super Smash Brothers. There's- that's something I really want to talk about. So, as you guys know, I'm a big Smash player. Future me put up the almighty Snoop Frog, tell everybody who my main is as if they don't know already. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a big Smash fan. And Mewtwo is had a very, very interesting history in Super Smash Brothers. Mewtwo started off in Melee. is a pretty low tier character. Mewtwo was not good. I mean, people did not consider Mewtwo as a good character. That didn't matter to me. When I was a kid playing Melee, it didn't matter if Mewtwo was good or not. I just liked playing as him. He wasn't my main. Mario was my main. But Mewtwo was not considered a good character. Brawl, Mewtwo was cut out, but we don't... We don't talk about Brawl. Brawl is the ugly duckling. <laughs> That's the general consensus of the Smash community. We don't talk about Brawl anymore. <laughs> to be fair, Brawl's the Smash game that I've played the least, so it's the game that I have the least experience with, but it is the Smash game where I, where I picked up Ike. I say the word Ike, and it catches. Had, I'm pretty sure if I just began the whole thing with, I fight for my friends, it would have caught. <laughs> Ike, thank you. You've made your friends proud. <laughs> but as I was saying, Mewtwo then comes back in Smash 4, starts off really low tier. But then after, I think, patch 1.1.4, that's when Mewtwo started getting buffed big time. Then Abadongo wins Pound. And Mewtwo is considered a top tier threat. So that was the rise of Mewtwo in Smash. Mewtwo is considered a top 10 character easily. But that's it. Mewtwo took me, I think, six minutes? <laughs> I didn't even. I, I, I still had more things to talk about. <laughs> I'll take it. Welcome aboard, Mewtwo. I'm not going to be using you because I'm not cheap, but whatever. <laughs> okay, that's it. Oh, wait. Please tell me I have an escape rope. Please tell me I have an escape rope in here somewhere. Please. Please. Shit! I'll meet you outside the unknown dungeon. Alright. We're done. We have Mewtwo. Guys, I think that's it. At this point, we have literally only one thing left to do. Actually, no, let me mention, uh, the fact that I still have my Master Ball, I could theoretically catch Suicune with my Master Ball, and maybe I'll show that at the beginning of the next episode, I'm not sure, but to be honest, I recommend saving your Master Ball for Suicune, because then that's just a free, you know, you don't have to worry about roaming around. If you see Suicune, just throw your Master Ball in it, you're good. But for nostalgia's sake, I just wanted to throw my Master Ball at Mewtwo for the first round, and then catch him legit. Which, that went a hell of a lot better than I thought it would. Anyway, we're gonna cut it here. Next time, there's only one thing left to do. I think we should go back to the Pokemon League, see if the Elite Four got any stronger, and then defend our title as a champion. And after that, that's gonna be the end, guys. Like, the grand finale of Pokemon Fire Red's coming up, guys. This is it. It's been a hell of a journey. I can't believe it's almost over. But yeah, I'll see you guys back at the Indigo Plateau when we fight the Elite Four one more time. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more Pokemon Fire Red.